Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY, and today what we're gonna be doing is installing a frost shield for our monolithic slab. So what we're gonna be doing is putting down a frost barrier for our monolithic slab. And all this is going to do is it's going to prevent um, freezing right at the edge of our slab. What it's going to do is make the freeze effect happen further away from our slab than right up against it, which is gonna help protect it from those freezing temperatures heaving our slab. So what we're gonna be doing is we have some 1B gravel here. All this is is a capillary break so we don't have moisture butting up against our XPS foam that we're gonna be having because we want to alleviate as much moisture as possible from around this. So it's gonna act as a capillary break. It's also going to allow us to even everything out in front of our pad so it's nice and smooth so we don't crack our XPS foam. And it's also going to um, help us slope stuff down a lot easier than raking dirt around. Um, because we want our foam pitched down and away from our um, from our monolithic slab. That way water hits that and just runs right off. So we're gonna go ahead and put our stone down here and get it all raked out nice and even. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this stone, rake it out, so we are pitched down. Um, I'm not going for anything specific, just enough pitch where water is gonna run off of that foam XPS board. Um, so we have about eight inches from the bottom to the top here, so we're gonna start at eight inches and just fan it out to about nothing. So now what we'll do is we'll go over this with the tamper and just get this so it's knit down so we don't have any kind of settling. So what we're going to do now is take a couple quick passes with the Vibe plate tamper and just kind of settle this stone in and work it so it's knit together. Now with that stone set a little bit better in place, what we're going to do is take an old level and we're just going to rake this down from the top down to our thinned edge just so we can kind of get stuff a little bit more level. We don't want that uh, foam board to break. So we're just going to try and level this out a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our first piece here. Now there are color differences. Um, this stuff here is blue, it's DuPont. The other stuff up here that we're going to use up against here is uh, Corning. They're all the same, they're all both XPS, they're just different colors. So what we're going to do is we are going to position this piece up against here and then we're going to measure for our top and we're right around four and a half inches right here. Um, so we're gonna cut out four and a half inches like this. Um, we don't want it where we are tucking this behind here because now we're leaving a seam for water just to get down there. So we want this up against the uh, here. So when we do put this down, if water gets down there, it hits this and then it can sheet right off. Um, you wanna make sure that you have your pitch on your foam um, so what we'll do now is we'll get our strips cut and get all this stuff laid out.
All right, guys, there you have it. This is our frost uh, shield barrier, however you guys want to call it. So basically the way it works is now frost is going to have to start out here and start freezing back towards the pad because this is going to insulate from here underneath. So it's going to have to work underneath this um, and get to underneath our slab then yet as well. So I have mine set at two feet. The further out you go, obviously the more protection you're going to get and also the thicker your insulation. This is two inch board, two feet. Um, to get underneath our slab, we're probably looking close to 32 to 36 inches. We're right there on the border. Um, so, but this is how much stuff we had left over from sheeting underneath here. So this isn't necessary. It's just an added protection to your monolithic slab. So it's really cheap. We used um, one, two boards um, for our front side here, and then just a couple strips here up on the edge to protect it. Um, from any cold air coming in contact with our cement and then working towards the inside of our slab. So there's a lot of benefits to this. It's super cheap. It's cheap insurance. It's going to help with our heating costs for in our slab and just kind of protect everything um, because we are going to heat up our slab. We had a radiant floor heat in here. Um, so this is just going to help that all that much more. But like I said, you can go longer and you can go with a thicker insulation to give you more protection and all we're going to do right now is we are going to put dirt on top of this i do have a question for you guys for those of you who've done this already if there is protection um, better protection if you take uh, that tarping uh, that we used for our vapor barrier and put that up and over as kind of like a rain shield i want to know if that is either helpful or detrimental if it's going to hold in moisture or it's going to help bleed stuff off. So if you guys have done this before, I'd love to hear that in the comments as well. So we're just going to fill this back up with dirt and we're done for this frost shield. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.